Binecuvântat să fie Dumnezeu, Tatăl Domnului Isus și Duhul Sfânt, uitându-mă la dumneavoastră, la fiecare în parte, laud pe Domnul. Sufletul meu laudă pe Domnul pentru fiecare suflet care este în casa Lui aici, pentru biserica locală, pentru că ne veți lipsi. Vom mai fi câteva săptămâni în mijlocul dumneavoastră, dar dacă a fost ceva care ne-a ținut până acum, este biserica Domnului. Și de câțiva ani de zi ne gândim și we did the cross-examination, frate Leonard, am cercetat lucrurile și oriunde mergem, credem că Domnul va fi cu noi, cum a fost și cu robul său Avram. Dumnezeu să vă binecuvinteze și să vă țină harul său și ori de câte ori vă aduceți aminte de noi, vorbiți despre noi cât de mult vreți cu Dumnezeu. Rugați-vă înaintea Domnului că avem nevoie de rugăciune. Cu cât vrem să slujim Domnul mai mult, cu atât mai mult cel rău se luptă. Eu am nevoie de rugăciuni înaintea Domnului. Cel mai mare bine puteți să ne faceți mie și familie mele să vă rugați Domnului pentru noi, ca eu și casa mea să slujim Domnului, pentru că este biserica în care Dumnezeu ne-a binecuvântat, că din 2003 soția a fost aici, în 2004 eu m-am mutat, aici ne-am căsătorit, aici am adus copiii la binecuvântare, aici Dumnezeu a revărsat har, ne-a cercetat prin cuvânt, ne-a vorbit prin Duhul Sfânt, nu numai duminica, dar și marțea și joia, veniți la casa Domnului. Ce har, că văd băncile pline din nou, slăviți să fie Domnul. Am trecut prin ce am trecut, trebuie să fim recunoscători. Singurul motiv pentru care cineva nu vine la casa Domnului este, am găsit expresia în Ieremia. Sunt închis și nu pot să merg la casa Domnului, a spus Ieremia. Dacă ești închis în închisoare, pentru Evanghelie, slavă Domnului. Ești parte din casa Domnului. Nu stai acasă nepăsător, mă dacă ești bolnav. Dumnezeu să ne binecuvinteze. Cel prea înalt ne-a binecuvântat cu copii. Și cresc, and they grow, Lord Jesus. The Creator gave us children. I pray that we have a good translation. I'm going to be slow and clear. So my dear brothers, fathers and grandparents that I love and respect, they will understand as well. And we wonder oftentimes, what shall we do with my children? They grow and they have energy. What shall we do with them? And we learn from Asaph, what shall we do? First, we shall open our mouth and speak and have a conversation. Before we have a conversation with our children, we should have a conversation with our Creator. As soon as we find out the baby is coming, even before it's born, whether a boy or a girl, we have to mention when there's nothing else, there's only a boy and a girl. Born in a family. The only family is a father and a mother, founded by God Almighty, and we better believe it now with all our heart, and we better believe it and stand for it, 10, 15 years from now, because we know what's coming. Stand for the truth. And if we have to die for the truth, we glorify God in our life and in our death. So be it. Let the Lord be glorified and whatever happens to us. We're going to stick to the truth. And it's God's will to suffer because of the truth we learned yesterday. Let it be. The Holy Spirit will rest upon us when that happens. Don't be afraid. We should tell our children, just as Asaph says here in Psalm 78, give ear, O my people, give ear, O my people, to my law. Give ear, O my children, to my law, my statutes, my standard, because there should be wise principles in our family. Incline your ear to the words of my mouth, because I open my mouth and I'll speak. We should speak, we should have a conversation. As we speak to the Lord about our children, the rest of the day I will spend with our children. We should speak to them about the Lord. This is what we should do with our children. We should open up our mouth, pray before God about them. We shall bring them before the Lord, and then we should speak to them about our great God. What shall we speak to them? I will open my mouth in parables, speak them, to them in parables, speak to them in illustration, speak to them clearly in such a way that they will understand. Speak to them in Romanian, speak to them in English. The bottom thing is for them to understand. I will utter dark saying of old, in Romanian translation says, lucruri înțelepte din vechime. Deci primul lucru, ne deschidem gura și vorbim copiilor noștri, le spunem lucruri înțelepte din vechime. 
Just as Jeremiah says in chapter 6, verse 16, stand in the ways and see and ask for the old paths where the good ways, the good way is and walk in it. Stați în drumul și întrebați, care sunt cărările cele vechi? Dar noi nu vrem cei vechi. We don't, all, we don't want the old things. And the truth is never old. Whatever truth was mentioned first 4,000 years ago, whatever truth is now expired and is still good for us today. Cărările cele vechi, calea cea bună, the good way, Walk in it, and you shall have peace for your soul. On this troubled world, when so many have their stress, anxiety, go to the scripture. Go to the old teachings, the foundation that never changes. The society changes. Those around us are changing. The things are changing. Even the outside appearance of the earth, of the cities and towns, when you walk in a City that you haven't been there for 20 years. Many things are new. God never changes. His word never changes. Let's go back and go deep, having our roots and the wise and things of the scripture, the truth, whatever. There's nothing old with the truth. It's always, it's always been there and always will be. Two plus two is four. In America and China and Africa, everywhere. And it always been, always continue to be. It's been in the past and will be in the future. The same way with the word of God, with the sound principle of the Lord, he will never change it. Society is acting in such a way that, well, this, they are pushing it and pushing so many things and if this is the way it is and society believes it. And the truth is the truth even if no one believes it. And a lie and a deception is a lie and deception leads to death even though everybody believes it. May the Lord give us wisdom so we teach our children what is right. I will not hide it from them. Let it shine. Let the light of the truth shine in our hearts and the hearts of our children. So we open our mouth. That's what we do. What shall we speak? What we heard, what we know, what we read in the scripture, what our fathers told us. It's what I, as a parent, the responsibility falls on the parents, not on grandparents. It's okay if a grandparent they want to teach their grandchildren. But here Asaph in the scripture and other places is telling us the responsibility is for us, the fathers. We have to teach them what we heard, what has been passed on to us. We are here and we believe the truth because someone before us, generations before, they were faithful to the Lord. And they pass on to us, and we want to pass on to our children. It's our responsibility as a parent. It's my experience with the Lord. That's what I'm going to share. If I'm not faithful, what can I tell them? What can I share with them? The children are the most important assets that we have on this earth. They're the only thing that we take with us in heaven. Precious human beings, for beings for whom Christ Jesus died. We're not going to take our homes on whatever we have, cars, lands, nothing else but the children. Therefore, we want to take our children with us. And if you are on the way of salvation, take your children with you. If not, at least be honest, like some parents are, and tell their children, don't do what I do. He's drinking, but tell his children, don't drink. You know it's not good. If you're not on the way of salvation, and you don't want to be, if you want what's best for your children, whoever you are, let them find the truth. Because we have examples in the scripture Faithful Samuel. Nu putem spune nimic rău despre Samuel și totuși copiii lui nu l-au urmat. Faithful parents and the children are not faithful. It happens. We also have a disobedient parent like Ek, Korah. No, Kore, Datan și Abiram. They rebel against Moses and against God. And his children were old enough Mature enough to say, no, dad, we're not going to be with you. And they were not there when the earth cracked and they went in the place of the death alive, the scripture says. Here there were wise children who knew that their parents are not following the Lord. They are against the Lord. 
If that happens in your house, we have to speak the whole scripture. And this is in the Bible. If your parents are not faithful, you save your life. Because I'm sure those disobedience parents that don't care and don't repent, they might cry like the rich man, now it's too late. He wishes that his brother will not, his brothers, five brothers will not come where he is. But it's too late from there. While you're on earth, you follow the Lord. You don't want to follow the Lord, let the others follow the Lord. Don't stop them. So we are following the Lord. We want to take the children with us. So we tell them our testimony, what we have experienced, what we know, what we heard. Number three, and what do we know, what we heard, what we, have we learned? Verse four, telling the generations to come the praises of the Lord. How wonderful our God is, the creator, the sovereign God almighty. We should tell them his strength and power and his wonderful works. It amazes me every time I think about the creation, the galaxies. My children showed me the other day how big Jupiter is compared with Earth. And then when you look, compare them with the sun, all these nine, eight planets that we have, the sun is way bigger. Imagine the wonderful works of God. These planets are spinning around the axle and are spinning around the sun with the speed that God set. Imagine this earth that we don't, we don't feel it, but we believe it now. Spins around its axle with a thousand miles an hour. When is it going to stop? Where is the energy from? God said, if you spin with this speed, that's what happens until he says, stop. Amen. Glory to God. How great how God is. Can even, we, we just lose ourselves when we think about the creation. Let's not forget in Isaiah chapter 6, the four creatures that are around the throne of God are shouting, holy, holy, holy is God Almighty. Let's not forget the second phrase. And the earth, the whole earth is full of his glory. Și tot pământul este plin de mărirea Lui. Despre mărirea Lui se spune copiilor noștri. Să-L vadă prin ochii credinței. Și de fapt vedem și cu ochii de carne minunăția creației sale. Să nu uităm lucrul acesta. Slăvit să fie Domnul. Aceasta să spunem copiilor noștri. Aceasta să învățăm. For he established a testimony in Jacob. Și acum vine mesajul Evangheliei. Planul de mântuire a Lui Dumnezeu. A hotărât un testimony, a hotărât o istorie, l-a ales pe Avram, Isaac și Iacov și Iacov, Israel, și continuă după Domnul Hristos prin biserica sa, în care Israelul este inclus, evreu sau grec, dintre neamuri toți. A hotărât și are o mărturie în 1 Corinteni 10, de două ori spune, what happened to them, to the Israelites? It's a testimony, for, it's an example for us that we may learn. We should speak to our children the testimony and the gospel of salvation, how he chose Israel, how they were slaves in Egypt, how they came out through the blood of the Lamb, and how we washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. They were baptized into Moses, and we have to be baptized into Jesus Christ in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And how they were led by the pillar of cloud in the day and the pillar of fire in the night, which represents the leading of the Holy Spirit that we so much need every day. And that, and I told to the teenagers that I talked that they're going to be baptized next Sunday. It is expected that in about two, three years, they should come to the maturity. After two years that they came out of Egypt, that they were saved, they made it all the way to the Jordan River, and they're supposed to cross in. But they didn't have faith, and they were turned back. It is expected maturity two, three years after you know the Lord, after you make a covenant with the Lord Jesus Christ, that you grow. I told them two, three times at least, read the Bible, eat it. These are signs of a new birth. You're hungry and thirsty to know the Lord. Don't spend the wilderness. So many Christians, they cross, cross the Red Sea, but they're not cross the Jordan River. They are still in wilderness, murmuring and complaining. Looking back and wishing they're going back to, to Egypt. It's so sad. We need to be mature. 
Asaph said we, we have to teach them in such a way that they were able and capable to teach their children after them. We have this in a book of Hebrews. It's telling them you're supposed to be teachers by now and you still need the milk, the ABCs. And Apostle Paul is telling Timothy, you train others, you teach others in such a way that they will be able to teach others as well. From generation to generation, this is the testimony of God that we have to share with our children. And the plan of salvation, he established a testimony, he appointed a law, how he gave them the law in the wilderness, how he showed them how to worship the Lord in the tabernacle, and all the experiences in the wilderness. And the example that I gave you about Korah, Numbers chapter 16, you read that. Book of Numbers are many examples, five, six events, major events in the life of Israel that we may learn from. We have to make his testimony known and his law, his commandments known to our children so that they will do what? So that they may believe in God. We open our mouth and speak to our children because faith comes by hearing. It's not enough to live a righteous life. They have so many questions. Why, Dad? Why do this? Why don't do that? Why don't we go to cinema? Why don't we go to the celebration of the world with music and dance? They have many whys and whys, and we need to be able to open our mouth and explain to them the reasons from the Word of God. That's how faith comes, by hearing, and hearing by the Word of Christ. And we speak with them about the plan of salvation and why we want to be saved. We want to live like a saved people, worthy of our calling. So help us, Lord. So that may, verse 7, so that they may set their hope in God, they believe in Him and trust in Him, that they may not forget His works. It's not enough. Yes, I remember. I don't forget. It's not enough. One more. And they shall keep it. They shall keep it. These are the three very important reasons Asaph gives us, inspired by the Holy Spirit. They set their hope in God, that they may have faith. The two young girls that sang the song, we believe in this for this baby. We believe that God will take care of the baby. We believe that the Lord will take care of our children. But as, they, as we believe and as our children grow, we pray for them and we teach them in such a way that they will believe for themselves. Once they come to the age of maturity, accountability, they know to differentiate between right and wrong. I cannot. They cannot be saved based on the parents' faith. They have to believe for themselves. May the Lord bless them. Because, verse 8, there is a stubborn and rebellious generation. Oh, how much we see this. And the, 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 the society is promoting this stubbornness. And it's so sad that they don't see that they reap the consequences of their own policies. They suffer because of their own policies and they're so blinded by the devil. They don't see it. They don't want to repent. It's so sad. This is why we pray for our children. We speak to them. We don't want them to grow a rebellious and stubborn generation because they will reap the consequences. We know what the Lord is going to do with the generation that does these things. And I'm going to draw to a close because we have an enemy of our souls parents and children that is fighting and the best armor and equipment for us it's obedience and trust in the Lord Amen. speaking about children I watched a little bit of what happened in Uvalde Texas a tragic shooting and I saw the, a lot of police officers with all kinds of gears and SWAT team with bulletproofs and all kinds of weapons very well equipped and they stood there for 45 minutes and didn't go in to save the children that have no equipment, no bulletproof vest. Someone else had to come. What a shame for 45 minutes. And I thought this is like the image of the Western culture. We can boast that we have money, we have all the equipment in the world, but you don't have the heart, the willing, the motivation, the wisdom, because there is no fear of God anymore, which is the beginning of wisdom. And the enemy is laughing to your face with all your equipment, with all your riches that you have. It's so sad. This is like the image of the Western culture. 
And this is what's happening in the world. The, the enemies of America and the Western Europe are laughing. You can have all the equipment. You don't have the will, the zeal, the motivation, because there is no fear of God. And we don't want that to happen with our children. We want them to be strong and equipped and obey. This is the power when we obey. And when the Lord is with us, whether you have the equipment or not, you will be victorious. When I listened to the testimony of one of the teachers, got three bullets in his body, he made it, he survived. He had 11 children in his classroom, and they all were shot to death. He said in many families, they say they lost a child, they lost a child, I lost 11. He loved his children. And he says something that touched me. I'm going to go to the ends of the world, he said it twice. Make sure their death is not in vain. They didn't deserve this. Well, Christ didn't deserve to die. Would you go to the ends of the world to make his death not in vain? And his life and his example on earth? We are called to be missionary. Let's start in our house and let's start in our home with our children. Not only that death should not be in vain, but their life that they live for the glory of God should not be in vain. And whoever lives for the glory of God, that life is not in vain. And that person, when will pass away, that death of that person will not be in vain. May the Lord help us, show mercy to us, that we'll speak to them what we have experienced, our responsibility as a parent, the wonderful works of God, how great He is, the plan of salvation, that they may be strong, they may have hope in God. They may keep and not forget His word through which we are saved, through which we may have eternal life. May the Lord bless us. Amen.